What's up guys, welcome back. And today we have not really a review, but an overview of some of Greenlight's 164 Daytona prototypes that they made in 2008, 2009 roughly. Now these are on the Riley MKXX bodywork, or Mark 20 bodywork, even though some of them were on the Mark 11 bodywork in real life. Um, but these again were produced around 2008, 2009 with one of them being produced as late as 2017. Now, I did have a couple of these growing up as a kid, mainly the two Brumos cars and then the two Chip Ganassi racing cars in their Rolex 24 livery. So, why are these cars so important to me? Well, these cars, I grew up watching them as a kid, so I will always have a fondness for this look. Now, they were not the best looking cars in the world. Actually, a lot of people will debate far from the best looking cars in the world. However, I enjoyed watching them race. I enjoyed the sounds of them. All that fun stuff. Now... The second reason that I have a very peculiar fondness for these cars is I did have some of these as a kid, like I mentioned. However, I did lose them over time as any kid does with his toys. Now, I did manage to refind them. Um, luckily, there was a gentleman who made diecast reviews at the time before he was famous named David Land who reviewed the two Chip Ganassi cars here which he made the mistake of telling me where he got them from. A place called Gearheads here locally in Indianapolis. Now, why is that significant? Well, I met somebody who would later on become one of my closest friends named Brody, also known as Diecast Reviews, who introduced me to the rest of the people who made me part of the group. The rest is history. It's a fun story. So I will always have a fondness for these cars because they ultimately led me to um, being friends with a lot of people on the or in the racing community, excuse me. So I kind of zoned out there trying to figure out how to word this, but anyways, so let's go ahead and take a look at some of these cars that were produced. Now there were a couple more, and then some of these, there was a couple versions made of, uh, like for instance, this car here, this is the 2009 Rolex 24 winner, the number 58 Brumos Porsche. They had the 2008 regular season car made of it as well as the number 59 in its 2008 official livery. Um, this car had two versions made of it, one in its standard uh, release, and then one as a, a, a Grand Am Rolex Sports Car Series champion. And this one here was actually released in 2017. And that's really about it. So there was a very limited run of them made. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of them. This is the 2009 Rolex 24 winner. It's a little bit dusty, as you can see. Um, now the engine covers on these do come off to reveal an engine. Now, this one here is separate or is different from the others because the others share this style engine where this one here, for whatever reason, is different. Um, it's the only one to have this style of engine in there, but it is nice to have a little bit of engine and transmission um, detail in there as well as some suspension and like um hoses and stuff like that the engine cover does fit on nice and snugly with no obvious major gaps or anything um like i said these are a little bit dusty they've been in a box for a little while but you do have separate rubber tires a metal chassis on it uh copyright 2008 green light riley technologies mkxx which this one is inaccurate because it never used the mark xx or the mark 20 it only used the mark 11 that pre preceded it we have the kind of the standard headlights for these cars a lot of times they would decal over them with like manufacturer stylized headlights um two little inlets there as well as the main grill and then here is this and then what's curious is you can kind of see where the decals are folded over because that Mark 11 had different openings here um, and they were kind of triangular shaped on it and kind of angled down a little bit. So interesting that you can kind of see where this thing would be a Mark 11, but it really isn't. Um, Brumos Porsche, like I said, this is the 2009 uh, Rolex 24 winner. They did make a second version of it or a predecessing version of it with the full season car it didn't have the american flag on the roof it had a uh, white rear corner panels and it had a black split splitter as opposed to a white one and this is the only one with a colored splitter on it let's go ahead and take a look at these two these are the two chip ganassi racing um rileys now this one here is the 2008 rolex 24 winner and this one is the 2009 base 02 that ended up finishing in uh, the wonderful position of p5 in that race 
Obviously, they're inverse liveries with Target being the front sponsor of this one and Telmex on this one. Love this livery as a kid. I preferred the O2. It looked better from this angle. Um, and it also had Scott Dixon and Dario Franchitti in the car as well. It actually had Dan Weldon in the car. And I believe the rear wing is a little bit loose, but anyways. Um, so this one here, very beautiful. I love the blue color, the red, white, and blue as it's affectionately, um, or presently colored and then we got the blue white and red this one is the more famous one because it won more times it had Juan Pablo Montoya in it as well as Scott Pruitt and Mamo Rojas um actually this one here has a little bit of a cracked windshield oops <laughs> uh this is when they ran the Lexuses so that obviously it's pre-2010 in that uh respect wow sad that this one has a cracked windshield but this is the 2008 Rolex 24 winner. Like I said, these are pretty dusty because they have been sitting out for a bit. And again, engine cover comes off with the older style. This here, like to break, you could easily break this off of there. Um, don't ask how I know. Like I said, I had some of these when I was younger. Um, this one also inaccurate because in 2008, they used the Mark 11. And actually this one in 2009, they used the Mark 11. Um, this is the Bob Stallings Gaines Co. Racing car. Very nice one. Uh, I do enjoy this livery quite a bit. It's great to see it return uh, in 2018 in IMSA with the um, JDC Miller Motorsports team, the Red Dragon. But ultimately, that would be the last season for it. But the, where, the last race for this team actually ended under tragic circumstances with uh, Memo Gidley crashing out very, very early on in the 2014 Rolex 24. Um, and he just won his first race since then. And one of the lower series, which is fantastic for him It, you know, seven years it was, and it's very good to see memo back. This is the full season entry of Alex Gurney and John Fogarty, two names you haven't heard in a while, but this is on the Pontiac, um, Riley engine combo. You can tell how old this is because Pontiac went out in business in 2009. So, yeah. Over here is one of the rarest of the group that we have. This is the regular season 01 Chip Ganassi Racing Telmex Riley. Um, this one, I believe, is 2009. It is an absolutely fantastic looking car. This was such a dominant car in its time. Um, definitely one of the yeah this is a 2009 release definitely one of my favorites and it took me a long time looking for this it, none popped up on ebay or anywhere else and i happened to stumble across two of them um at a um memorabilia show of all places and i bought both of them because i knew how hard they were to get your hands on and i actually gave one to david as like a thank you for kind of bringing me into all this and then he reviewed them again and then posted a video of some of our diecast uh destruction videos by the way i have a compilation put together um just comment below if you guys want me to like actually upload that because it's like 25 minutes long of just pure diecast destructions it's every single one we've ever done very few people have seen it and there's a reason so do you want me to upload it or unprivate it comment below but very beautiful car. Now, this one here is probably even more rare. This is the Mike Shank Racing number 60, driven by Oswaldo Negri and Mark Patterson. Very interesting one here. Um, this is Mike Shank before he was really famous, uh, before he won an Indy 500 and all that other fun stuff, before he was a factory Acura team. He raced Ford. Now, this is a 2009 release. I'm actually fairly certain it's a 2009 release. But maybe 08, actually, because he switched to Ford after 07 from Lexus and then started in 08 with Ford and then continued on. And then that would lead to him actually winning a Rolex 24 in 2012. But anyways, so this is a very, very beautiful car in the orange and black. You can see here it's an 08 release. This is number 84. I was stunned to see this one because this is one of the ones that was really hard to find. And the second I saw it at Gearheads, I grabbed it up because this one here is the most rare and it's the most expensive and you i've not seen another one on any selling platforms or memorabilia shows or anything like that since i bought this back in 2016 it's a fantastic looking car and 
I'm very grateful for the chance. Now, I wish Greenlight would have produced the number six car, which is blue where this one is orange, but they never did. I wish they would produce quite a few more of these Daytona prototypes, but like I said, they didn't. But very beautiful, very beautiful die cast here. I'm, like I said, this is one of those uh, just amazing looking ones that really show kind of how far Mike Shank has come in terms of his racing. I mean, now he's the factory Acura team. Um, he's won an Indy 500. He's full season in IndyCar with two entries. But this is back when he was just running a little team in the Grand Am Rolex Sports Car Series. And it's great to see kind of the evolution of these teams since this car was produced and since the real life counterpart raced. And this one here was kind of a cool one to see brought back. This is a um, obviously golf liveried um, Riley. This was a golf promotional is like the running on empty series that they made in 2017. Engine cover is really hard to get off on this one, but it does come off. Um, which has the same engine and all that. Like I said, this is the only one that has a different engine to it. Um, really weird how they added this little like arrow piece here. Um, American flag on it, number 10 with Gulf oil all over it. Um, this one here has like more pronounced rain tires on it, which all these have rain tires on it, curiously enough. Um, but it's a very cool one for sure. Uh, for whatever reason, this one reminds me of like the Victory Junction car that ran in 2016 at the 24 Hours of Thunder Hill. It was a MKXX, which had been long out of production. Um, but yeah, very cool set of die casts here and a very cool story, very special relationship that I have with these cars. And, you know, thanks to David Land for telling me where to get them. And then that led us to being friends and all that other fun stuff. Um, and all the other people that have come along the way. So anyways, that's really it for this overview of these cars. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed a little bit of a story time. And we will see you in the next video, which should be a Dalton Kellett review. That's going to be fun. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. And as always, peace out.